The fourth point is what I've seen God do in my life. Okay, I mentioned to you, gave my life to Christ at, at nine years old, spent a period of time in college drifting away from him, got back around some other coaches and a little spiritual teacher in Fayetteville, Arkansas, teaching me in Sunday school. I realized I hadn't really been living for God. They were living for him. I was on God's team. I hadn't been living for him. And I got up and went forward in church one night and rededicated my life. I said, God, I've been on your team. I haven't been living for you. That's what I want to do. I want to live for you. And as I journeyed through life, I think there's undeniable things that have happened to me that can't be accidents. And that's my testimony to what God has done in my life. I'll give you one example. Um, I, I, coaching was a big deal for me. And I always wanted to be a head coach. Well, I'm an assistant coach um, in St. Louis. And we had a situation there where the coaching staff was changing. I was looking around for a different job. And John McKay, who I coached for in college, was now the head coach at Tampa asked me if I wanted to be the offensive coordinator in Tampa. Hey, this is a dream come true. That move, I figured, hey, my next move is going to be, hey, uh, I'm going to be a head coach. That's normally what happens. You're the offensive coordinator. Now you got a chance to get a head coaching job. All excited about that, go down there. That season took off, and i got to tell you, it fell apart. I mean, halfway through that season, with all the hard work and everything, my hand would shake. And I can remember being so upset with what was taking place with our football team. After the season, I was really torn with everything that happened. And so I was kind of praying. And of all things, Don Coriel, my college coach, had just got the job with the Chargers. And here was my prayer. God, don't have him call unless you want me to leave here and go with him. The next day, Don Coriel called. And he offered me a job out there. The problem was I wasn't going to be the offensive coordinator. Somebody else was going to be the offensive coordinator. I was just going to be an assistant coach. In other words, I was going to be backing up in my career. And boy, I, I got to tell you, that really upset me. Over a process of what happened there with Coach McKay and having a discussion with him, I did decide to take the job and leave Tampa. I was going to rejoin Coriel and I was going to coach out there. But I got to tell you, I had no peace about that. So in the process, my little spiritual father, George Sterrell, is in Fayetteville, Arkansas. And I said, I want, to, I want to try and go back and talk to George about this. I didn't have any peace. Got on an airplane, flew, and wound up in Fort Smith. You had to take a puddle jumper on up to um, Fayetteville, Arkansas. Got snowbound. I'm saying, goodness gracious, the whole time questioning God, why is this happening to me? I just want to go talk to George. I remember I had my bags. I went out front. Two guys are standing there talking about driving to Fayetteville. You couldn't fly. OK, they shut down the airports. And so I heard these two guys talking. I just walked over to them and I said, hey, you going to Fayetteville? They went, yeah. I said, I'm going with you. I didn't ask. I just threw my bags in the back seat. And so we take off down the road. These guys, I don't know where they were from, but I got to tell you, they couldn't drive in bad weather. They're all over the place. And so I said to myself, they ain't making it. And so again, I'm questioning God. And here's what I said to those guys. I said, pull over. I want to get out. I got out, crammed across the center divider on a freeway, got on the other side and hitchhiked my way back to Fort Smith. Man, I, I am kind of soaked with snow. Questioning again God the whole time, went back in, knew I wasn't going to be able to get to Fayetteville, rebooked my flight to go back to Tampa. I went over and sat down at that airport, okay, just totally de dejected. And I looked over and sitting next to me in that airport was the Bible, sitting on the counter. How many times have you seen that and where you sit in an airport, a Bible sitting there? So I picked it up. I had been studying the first chapter of James. I turned to the first chapter of James, started reading. Without me saying anything, a guy tapped me on my shoulder. And here's what he said. He said, I claimed that chapter in my life six months ago. Without me saying a word. I turned to him, and, and he just relayed to me that he had made a move 
with his occupation, found out that he didn't qualify in that state. He was going to have to retake a test to be a pharmacist. It was almost impossible to pass. He panicked. He said, I'm going to lose my occupation. And through kind of a miracle process, he said, God led him to that test, and he wound up passing the test. And he said, basically, the whole time I was worried about my occupation, as soon as I put it in God's hands, everything worked out for me. And I was dumbfounded. I'm sitting there. I haven't said hardly a word. And this message was so important for me to hear. I got up, wrote down his phone number so I could contact him later on. And I got on that airplane to fly back to Tampa. And here's what I said. I said, God, I'm through putting, you know I want to be a head coach. I'm through trying to do this myself. I'm putting all this in your hands. Climbed on the plane, took off. I go to the Chargers. I'm going to be the backfield coach. Two weeks after I got there, the person who was the offensive coordinator got a head coaching job with the Giants. Don Coriel called me in and said, Joe, I want you to coach the quarterbacks, the job I wanted. And two years later, I was the head coach of the Washington Redskins. Now, that's just one incident in my life. But I thought it's one I wanted to share with you. This book comes alive for you. If you're on God's team, he, and when you trust him, he's the one, okay, can put you in the place where he wants to be with your occupation, with your finances, with your relationships. He's the person. And so I share that with you. And so today what I've shared with you, what I feel like is definite proof, undeniable proof that God exists. So what have we said in recapping? Well, there's four things that I think proves that God exists. This world and the way it's crafted. This Bible, it's a miracle book. Others' lives, like I shared with you, Don Bro. And then my life, I just shared one incident. There's many, many more. And many of them are in this devotional, okay, that we've been kind of sharing with you. So if that's the case, God exists, and I think it's undeniable proof he does, I just want to ask you this question. Are you on God's team? Can you point to a specific time and place in your life where you ask Christ to come into your life, forgive you of your sins, and be your Lord and personal Savior? If you haven't, I want to give you that opportunity today. I think there's God exists. I think we need to make him our head coach, and I'm going to give you a chance to do that right now with me if you just pray this simple little prayer with me. Father, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to this earth. He lived a perfect life. You allowed him to go to that cross and be crucified on that cross for my sins. He came back to life that third day. He sits with you. I want you to come into my life, forgive me of my sins, and I want you to be my Lord and personal Savior. Amen. God says, if we pray that prayer, meaning it, okay, that you're on God's team. In game plan for life, we need to have the right head coach, and that's God. Thank you for being with me today. And I think what we talked about today, there's undeniable proof that God exists. If you've enjoyed these Chalk Talks, subscribe to our channel and visit GamePlanForLife.com.